Uh, good morning. This is the fourth Sunday of this month of October, and it's good that uh, some uh, encouraging things we have heard here in the Philippines, for example, our nation tapos na tong gira no, sa Marawi, but uh, there are still many problems to solve there. And also here for the previous several days, the Lord has been with us as we uh, uh, went on with our work and uh, important activities. So I hope that everything is okay with you and that uh, and the Lord is uh, 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 blessing you, providing your needs and opening to you uh, new, new news from uh, Him so that you will continue to grow in the Lord. So it's wonderful Lord, uh, to do that. And this morning we proceed to our study, remember our theme, Marching the Heartbeat of, of God. And we uh, studied about uh, other people who, who did that. And uh, like uh, uh, the different churches like here in uh, the, the church to whom uh, Titus wrote and uh, in Crete the church in Crete, and then the other people he mentioned here who were with him. Also, we studied the Sunday evening about two Christian leaders. One was Zenas, a lawyer, Christian lawyer. Another one, Apollos, another Christian teacher who was sent there uh, to bring the letter to Titus in the island of Crete. And uh, the new things we studied about that are very beautiful. And so to add to what uh, we have already studied, we are continuing with the theme, Marching to the Heartbeat of God. And right now, uh, part of the story, we are going to uh, talk about Jonah here, and then Judas Iscariot, and then, uh, of course, uh, we will study about how the church was reviving and maintaining uh, God's heart. And tonight, another thing we'll study is the uh, three friends here who were, were doing things according to the heartbeat of God. See Stephanas, see Fortunatus, and Achaeus. That's found uh, here in uh, the Bible in First Corinthians. So, uh, going back to today's message. So, so God's heart beat in contrast. So that means some kind of comparison here. And we, we stopped uh, marching to the heartbeat of God. What happens? Okay, the others are going with the heartbeat of God, doing the work of the Lord, the mission work, the support, the prayer, the getting involved. But suppose we will not. So what shall we do? So here are two people who did not. And then, but what we do, what is the result? But when we decide, okay, I was wrong in not listening to the assignment that God has given me. Now I believe in it. So, so I will uh, make, uh, uh, make myself new and uh, try to full form, perform what I do. There's two things here we'll discuss uh, briefly. Stopping. To be in step with God's heartbeat. Have you noticed? Have you remembered when you were watching a past and review? You know, in high school and in in college of uh, the the military training of uh, some students, high school and also in college. I remember when I was uh, uh, in the university. It was always uh, wonderful time for us that when there is a Pass and review of the ROTC in our school in Nililo. We would gather there and it's very beautiful when they march around and then uh, do some drills. It's very, very, very beautiful. So they were, the, those who are involved in that drill, they are always stepping in step with the, the overall uh, direction of the adjutant. And so it's very nice to watch. So Christian life is like that. There are sometimes people who stop to be in step 
with God's heartbeat so they don't walk together with the company. So there are two persons I would like to talk about here. The one is Jonah and the other is uh, Judas Cariot. That's, uh, that's very uh, negative, no? But anyway, the, I would like to take up your thoughts here. The last chapter of Jonah. I know that in childhood with most of us, the story of Jonah was very familiar because here was the man who was uh, uh, swallowed by a whale and then uh, uh, he, he lived and then he was cast to shore and then he went to Nineveh to preach the word of God. But of course, we know now that Nineveh is at beside the sea. So Jonah had to walk according to uh, scholars about uh, 30 days walk, you know, from the, the seashore to, to Nineveh, because Nineveh is inland. So there are people, there were people just like Jonah here, who did not walk according to the heartbeat of God. Now, what did he do? So just a review a little bit of our Sunday school lesson. And our later our study of uh, a deep a little deeper of the book of Jonah. Now that was the time of Jonah uh, during the reign of uh, Jeroboam the second, king of Israel. Why Jeroboam the second? Because there was Jeroboam the first, so who was uh, Jeroboam the first? No, David uh, died, and then Solomon reigned, and then Solomon died. And there was a division in the kingdom of David uh, between the north and the south. So the north, north was loyal to David, the tribe of, uh, of uh, Judah and Benjamin, and the other ten tribes were loyal to uh, another king. So the son of, uh, of David was Rehoboam, and the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, who took his place. And uh, their group was divided with another king, uh, Jeroboam. So there were two kingdoms from that time. But anyway, after several years that uh, both kingdoms existed, later on in 793 to 753 BC, there was another Jeroboam. Another king named Jeroboam. Maybe uh, the king who, who was the father or the the mother like very much the name of Jeroboam so they named their son Jeroboam and in this uh, uh, history of Israel he called Jeroboam the second so today even in America or I mean in England or Europe when they have uh, kings they always say Elizabeth the first Elizabeth the second so on and so forth so this one is Jeroboam during his time, it was this, in his time that Jonah was the prophet. No, uh, he was prophet to the northern kingdom. So the northern kingdom that means ten tribes, because the southern kingdom are just two tribes of Judah and Benjamin. So this uh, existence of Jonah during his reign as prophet happened to about 760 BC. So that was a long time ago compared to our time now. <laughs> it's about uh, uh, 2,400 years ago. And according to the, the tradition, Jonah was the son of the widow of Remember the time of, uh, of, uh, of Elijah, the widow of Saripath, you know, had no food. And the only, uh, you know, one measure of meal and then that measure of meal multiplied at the end of the famine so that's a very exciting story and so anyway this, uh, this kind of of, uh, of uh, this prophet Jonah Jonah you know, was from Galilee so just it said here in, in John chapter 7 verse 15 that uh, he came from Galilee. So 
Remember Israel, they have several provinces, no? Galilee, Samaria, and then Judea. So to look, so Jonah was from Galilee. And it was during the time when God punish, was punishing Israel by uh, destruction and captivity. So during this time, there was a threat of, uh, of uh, a, a great nation from the north called Assyria. So Assyria in 722 BC uh, came to Israel and, you know, captured many Jews and brought them to Assyria. So part of that story we read in the New Testament uh, and they are very ex exciting stories. So it was a great problem in Israel and people were asking God. They were in, in search for answers to many questions. And uh, so during the time there was another nation in the north, Nineveh, that started to be strong and mighty and they wanted to conquer Israel. And uh, during this time, before all this happened, there was a plague in, uh, in the land. So that means in the Middle East, there was a plague. Now, uh, according to history, there was a plague in 756 BC and then uh, 759 BC. So whatever was uh, plague about people dying, disease is that we do not know exactly, but just like today, sometimes in countries like in Africa and even here, people dying of cholera and other new diseases, so we call it a plague. So during this period, 63 BC, according to history, according to science, there was a solar eclipse. So people say that when there is an eclipse, a sign of God's uh, moving in history, speaking the world about reminding about faith, about God and others. And so those these happenings in the ancient times prepared Israel <coughs> for the prophecy of Jonah, because Jonah started to preach about the gospel, the <coughs> the judgment of God. And so here, <coughs> Jonah was told by the Lord, okay, you go to Nineveh, they teach them the message from the Lord. But Jonah did not like to go to Nineveh. He was a prophet, yes, but he does not want to be a prophet to the Gentiles. He only wanted to be a prophet to Israel. But here he was appointed by God to go to the Gentiles. So that's why today, for us pastors and pastors, wives, and women, when we serve the Lord, we are not the one who chooses where we go. go. Some of us are called to be here in the Philippines. Some of us are called to be in other countries. So wherever the Lord wants us to go, we go. But Jonah, you see, God told him to go to Nineveh. He would not. And so the story is here. And God uh, uh, allowed him to be swallowed by a whale. Diba? Then when he prayed inside the whale, three days and three nights, he, the Lord forgave him and then uh, the whale blew him to the shore. And then he had to work another, walk another, I think another three weeks to go to Nenebi from the shore. Which shore did the fish uh, blow him? Was it in the, in the shore of the Mediterranean Sea? Or was it in the shore of the Arabian Sea? Well, we do not know. It's not uh, uh, told here in the Bible. And so, Jonah went to Nineveh and started to, to preach to Israel. And uh, in the story, uh, so we hear 
Jonah, you know, told the story here. He went to the Navy and, uh, and so he pronounced judgment on the people. And, uh, and so he sat down according to He sat down uh, on, a, on a hill in front of Nineveh. He said, I will wait until the Lord will rain his fire and judge Nineveh. So he was a kind of uh, prophet. After he said the prophecy, he wanted negative things will happen. And so, uh, when he sat there, nothing, nothing happened after three days. Why? Why is it that nothing happened after three days? Chapter 2, according to the story, all the people of Nenebi repented and they believed in the Lord. 120,000 of them. Including the the dogs, and the pigs, and the uh, and the uh, the goats, and the cows, the oxen. So nangunos sila they wore clothing of repentance. But anyway, Jonah hope na after three days, ulanan sila kayo sa ginoo patay sa nan. And Jonah waited. And then what happened here after three days? Nothing happened because they repented. Imagine all people repenting of their sins, 120,000 of them, according to scholars, including children during that time. Uh, there was, should have been 6,000 people in Nineveh from the adults to the 6,000 plus. And you see all of those people wearing clothing of of uh, repentance, including the cows and the and the and the goats and the dogs and the cats, I would like to see that. Maybe Lord, in heaven, sing Lord, the the play ang ang kwan bi video bi. Dito sa bi sa nenevi. Imagine what did the what did the dogs do? They they cry, go go wow wow sila. Then what did the the cows do? What did the the goats do? <laughs> like that to show the repentance. That was according to what the Lord says. Very fantastic, but it was. They did think about that. And so after three days, nothing happened. And you know, you know here, uh, Jonah said, "Okay, Lord." So he was he wa he watched, and then ulagi hapon. And then after the second day, uh, the Lord sent a very hot sun. In it, kayo kay si Jonah di ay kalbu, mudili siya pagbuok like ni Pastor Hiroy. Kalbu di di ang prophet. So sakit ang uya when the sun shone and nalipong. But the Lord was uh, good to him. He let a plant grow up, you know, from the desert to cover Jonah. In any plant, according to the King James Version here, the gourd. So, whatever that tree was that uh, would grow, grow in one day, the only plant that I know that would grow within one day is mushroom. Diba? Mushroom today. Wala na siya pag next day. Wala na siya. Pag next day, pag na siya. So, that's what happened to this gourd, the Bible says. Pag... Uh, as I said, second day, uh, while Jonah was sitting there, it grew and to cover Jonah from the hot sun. Then the third day, nalayo siya patay naman. So si Jonah nalipong. Ko siya kayo sa ginoo. The Lord spoke to him. He said, Jonah, what happened? Why are you so angry? He said, I I'm so angry, Lord, because of the gourd. Nanatay. <laughs> so nainitan ako. So the Lord told, according to the story in Jonah chapter 4 here, you were concerned with the gourd or with the mushroom that covered you. You were not concerned for 120,000 people of an enemy who would die if I will judge them. So he said, the Lord said, Usa ka man Jonah, ang imong kabalaka, ang imong burden, para lang sa uhong, no? sa gourd. And then it was a very, very beautiful, beautifully written book because uh, uh, in the last part here, in verses 10 to 
in, in verses 10, 11, the Lord said to Jonah, You have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, the, the great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much live livestock. Now, what was the ending of the writing of Jonah? Question mark. What does it tell us? Why is it that there is no conclusion here in the story, in the story of Jonah? For one, I think Jonah was a very good writer. Because he end yakasa and then maglilip ka unsa ang conclusion negative or positive so that, that Jonah was a very very good writer uh, like maybe some of you you are very good writers and then uh, you know there was excitement and so people when they read the book of Jonah after they read it kay question mark man, they will say what next what happened why 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 so they will ask questions so you see Jonah was a very good journalist no? because he does not conclude but he makes you think makes you ask questions it's a very beautiful you know many people many of the Lord's writers here in the Bible were very brilliant people they were artists and they were imaginative people like Moses like David the artists and imaginative people so just like Jonah he ended with a question mark because he was such a great writer and today what he wrote we are very interested interested to ask why 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 why, why? and the more we ask the why we get the answers from our own experience and from our insight from the Lord so that's uh, one thing that we find here in in Jonah so Jonah and the gourd and the plant so he was talking about souls of men that Jonah did not care about I believe in at the last part of the life of Jonah he became a dedicated uh, prophet because of the experience that's why he wrote this book and from him a very beautiful story came out favorite mga bata di ba ang story the big whale Jonah the big whale and now it will, should become our favorite because we understand the story of Jonah. It has become my favorite as a pastor because for the first time I realized here was a very, very good writer because he did not conclude his story but he ended with a question mark. And that means talent and uh, depth of mind. So that's it. But you see the, story, the, the, the point here is God's heart in contrast. Well, the first part of Jonah was a heartless prophet. The second part he became a, a prophet full of heart. And his book is one of the best in the Old Testament because it speaks to, 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 it speaks to the young people and especially it speaks to, to children because it's a very, very interesting story. Now, another person here God's heart in contrast. So negative ni siya, no? We're stopping to be in step with God just like Jonah temporarily. Another man stopped to be uh, in step with God. And that man is no other than uh, a man named Judas Iscariot. In connection with Judas, I would like to read to you Luke chapter 6 verse 13. Luke chapter 6, start with verse 12. Now it came to pass in the days that went out to the mountain, that he, I mean Jesus, to the mountain to pray, and continued all night in prayer. And when he was, it was day, he called his disciples to himself. From them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. So before he decided who will be the apostles, he prayed all night. And then at the last verse, verse 16, 
Judas, the son of Abbas, Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. So number 12 was Judas here. And this is what we're going to talk about. Judas, uh, why was he called Judas Iscariot? Now the commentary says, because he was a man from Kerioth. Barangay Kerioth. Uh, he was a native of that uh, uh, bar, 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 bar you there in the southern part of Judah, it's, which falls under the tribe of Simeon. So Judas Iscariot was from the tribe of Simeon. So he was among the twelve, as we have just already read. Listed later on, it says here, because he was a traitor. Sayang, no? A very bad commentary at the last part of this verse. The betrayer, the traitor. Also repeated in John chapter 13, chapter 30. And then uh, number three here, he kills Mary. Uh, when uh, uh, when Mary, you know, gave, uh, gave uh, to the Lord an amount of money. So... Judas said here in John chapter 16, 36, oh, this offering should have been, I mean, not the amount of money, but but the, the perfume that Mary poured upon the head of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said the money from this perfume should have been sold and given to the poor. But the Bible says, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he was the treasurer of the 12 disciples, and from the money, in the treasury of the two disciples, he gets some money to use for himself. So, makawat ni si Judas Iscariot. Now, why? Why is it that uh, he joined the twelve and then he became a traitor? He became uh, a thief. So, be careful. Today, we follow the Lord. You follow the Lord. You're so excited to follow him. So, you have to maintain. I have to maintain my faithfulness to the Lord. Otherwise, if I don't, as I go to him and serve him, then some worldly things will come to my mind. Maybe money, maybe your work, maybe your business, maybe your property, maybe other things you want to achieve, maybe going to, to abroad. And so they become a great desire in your heart. And if you cannot, you become discouraged and you backslide from the Lord. That's why Jonah... Uh, I mean, uh, Judas criticized Mary who gave, gave uh, her perfume, pouring it upon the head of the Lord. Uh, so it was uh, the Bible itself here, says here, he, he takes the money up once in a while. And, uh, and so at the last week, uh, the high priest offered money. Anybody who could bring Jesus to be arrested, before the court will be given some money. The Bible says 30 pieces of silver. How much is that today? Well, one piece of silver should be thousands today. So 30 pieces of silver may be millions in equivalent to our time. And he took that. That is in payment for betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did he need to betray Jesus Christ? I think... Uh, the first reason is the high priest and the other noblemen did not really know the appearance of Jesus Christ. Dili nila kaayo ila ang nawong ni Jesus Christ. So they must uh, ask somebody close to him. And then also, uh, where he goes in meetings and uh, fellowship with his followers, they don't know. Only Judas knew. All Judas knew that he will go to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. So they need a guide in order to find the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what happened. And so here uh, in Matthew 24, 4 to 16, that happened. And that, uh, you know, is a reminder to us in First Timothy 6, 10. He said, uh, uh, don't love money. Be careful with it, and be careful not to put your hand in the money. So, young professionals, so you are still beginning to have money, because in your in your profession, you begin to have big salary. So later on, 
the Lord will bless you and you will be in higher position. You will even have more money. In fact, uh, some of our professionals here, when they see there, there is an offer in the other company with a bigger salary, what do you do? So they resign in this company and go to the next to get a higher salary. So the question is, is it wrong? Not at all. It's a matter of choice for you and your future and your family and your plans in life as you pray to the Lord if it is being opened to you and offered to you bigger salary, bigger responsibility. If you can do that, go ahead. And uh, so... Uh, that's just a reminder and what class. And uh, so the Judas said, okay, okay, you you give me soldiers, we'll grow, go at night, we'll go to the Garden of Gethsemane, since it's dark, uh, I will kiss him. And when I will kiss you, arrest him. So the they say, say, Judas kiss. Have you all ever... <laughs> Have you ever heard Judas kiss? Well, in you are, you are a man. You you kiss your your wife. Is it Judas kiss? No, no. That's a very loving kiss, diva. Right? You men are not fond of uh, Judas kiss, huh? You kiss kasi someone pro. You're saying goodbye diya ito. Kiss diya na to because you are going to go to someone, another woman or another boy. So. Judas kiss na siya? I don't really know. So you know, it's between you and the Lord and the person concerned. But uh, it, Judas did that. So they went to uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. The Lord was just, just finished praying and they were about to go. And then Judas, you know, came with the soldiers and then he kissed him. And the Lord, in fact, told him, okay, are you going to uh, betray the Son of Man with a kiss? So I hope we will not use that for our own uh, device in life. And so later on, according to Matthew 26, 3 to 10, you know, Judas repented. He said, why did I do that to the Lord? And so he turned to the high priest and returned the money, but they will not accept it. We have nothing to do with it. It's yours, 30 pieces of silver. And you know what happened? And he threw it. And then he went back, and what did he do? Matthew 6, 3 to 10, he committed suicide. Did God forgive him because he committed suicide? Right for a Christian, when he realizes he has committed sin, he will commit suicide? I don't you know. It's hard. In the case of Judas, he did not repent. But you see, if you have read the stories of uh, Christians in, in Russia and in China, who were persecuted, you know, when the communists took over Russia and other countries there, and also China, you know, and Christians were beginning to be uh, uh, demanded to accuse one another or to identify the Christians. Some of the Christians committed suicide because they do not want to report who the Christians were. So that, so that they will not do that, they committed suicide. So that's the question now. Are they safe or not? So it's very hard to answer because they did it, you know, to protect other Christians. They committed suicide to protect the others. So only the Lord knows that. that you know, personally, I think it's okay to the Lord. But you see, when you commit suicide, will you go to hell? That's another thing. Right? Now, anyway, it's not part of our story here. Just, you know, open your mind. If you want to talk with me concerning that, we can talk later. And then so uh, he went up some kind of uh, the hill or mountain, and then he he rubbed his his neck, and then he jumped up to start as a hit. And so when they found us, he was already hopping, hang, hanging on the tree on top of a hill, and uh, they took. Uh, his money and uh, and then uh, threw it away and uh, uh, the place where he died they filled it up I mean his position was filled up by another disciple who took his place 
Okay, so that's Judas Iscariot. So that's what I was asking about those whose heart, heart stopped beating for God. So at first, as I was saying, the heart of Judas Iscariot was beating for Jesus Christ. But along the way, because he got money, and the Lord did not pursue the money and the owner, he deceived him. And so Judas, you know, uh, died an unbeliever, forsaking the Lord. But there's another one, Jonah. Jonah, as I told you previously, he repented and he returned to the Lord. So that leads us to the final point. Uh, uh, receiving, and maintaining, receiving and maintaining God's heartbeat. Our title, God's heartbeat bit in contrast. So let us maintain and receive the heartbeat of God in our heart. Preserve it there. Peter denied Jesus three times according to Matthew 26. And what did you do? 69 to 75, what the story says. Uh, uh, you know, in uh, John chapter 21, the Lord called Peter. He said, Peter, come here. And so they went, separated to the other disciples. What did the, the Lord say to Peter? A very, very beautiful story there in John 21. He said, uh, Peter, you look at these disciples over there. And then, uh, then uh, you look at uh, the things of the world. So he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? And then how many times did the Lord repeat that? Three times. Heart, you know that I love you. And so the Lord said, Okay, if you love me, you go and feed my sheep. And so uh, that's uh, the plan of God for Peter. He allowed him to backslide a little bit and then allowed him to return to the right relationship with God. So as a missionary, Linol, later you read in Acts chapter 12, Peter was imprisoned and delivered. And then he wrote two books in the Bible, First Peter and Second Peter. So out of that uh, terrible trial, it, became, it made him a deeper and more uh, diligent uh, disciple of Jesus Christ. Jonah, as we read about Jonah, in Jonah chapter 4, Jonah revived, he became a revived missionary. And his unwritten message to 120,000 people and children. So all in all, in Nineveh during the time there were about 120,000 adults and plus children in all during the time according to history there were about 600,000 plus people in the city of Nineveh, uh, that the capital of Assyria, that uh, the Lord reached to the prophet Jonah. Imagine Jonah, a great preacher, after backsliding, and then he did such a great For missionaries by giving, going, and praying. So now this is this missionary month. Are you continuing with your witness, involvement in our missionary work? And are you supporting with your faith promise? So today we will be distributing later uh, the missionary faith promise slips. And I hope you will pray. How much Lord I give again for our missions? Last year I gave it's wonderful that you are able to sustain our support for many missionaries in Thailand, in Cambodia, in other parts of the Philippines, and other nations. So I hope we will continue to do that. And aside from that, we ourselves will be able to give our time, our talents in going, praying for the work of the Lord of missions. So uh, God's heart in contrast in, con in connection with Mark
Hearken to the heartbeat of God. So to our members right now, are you now living and marching according to the heartbeat of God? As we have studied different people here, like Peter, like uh, Jonah, and then uh, Judas Iscariot. Where are you located in these pictures that they have just showed you? And uh, are you the one who has passed through some trials and disappointments, but yet come back to God? And then you continued marching in the heartbeat of God. And you never give up because you say, like me, we, are, we all believe, we all belong to this final generation that will give the gospel to the world before the Lord will come again. And that's a very important promise. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for this challenge for supporting missionaries as well as being missionaries ourselves. So may these lessons from, uh, from Jonah and Judas and Peter and all the other men of God will be a great lesson to us so that we will remain faithful and continue to be a bit of God in connection with preaching the gospel and world missions. In his name, amen.